Chapter 3 introduced a lot of new machinery. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. Today we're going to be continuing this short series of videos to introduce and explain the new features that came with Raft's Chapter 3, and how you can use all of those new features to your advantage in your own playthroughs. The topic of discussion for today is all of the new machines, and also all of the new farming items, because they kind of go hand in hand. So without further ado, let's dive into the second installment of Guides for Chapter 3, Machines and Farming. There aren't necessarily a ton of new machines, but they will certainly improve your quality of life as you progress through the game. So for comparison, I've included all of the items that used to be the highest level machines that you could make alongside their new counterparts, so you can really see what's different and how to use it. First up is the electric grill. If you've played this game for a while, you've been stuck with this old advanced grill for forever and its limited capacity to cook either three small items or one large fish. Well, with the help of the electric grill, you can now cook up to six regular items or two large fish. When I say regular items, I'm talking about any food that you typically cook that isn't a large fish. So potatoes, beets, the dreaded tilapia, your shark meat, all that good stuff. The main benefit to the electric grill, besides the increased cooking capacity, is of course the fact that it is powered via electricity rather than just four measly planks that you slapped into the grill, and then you have to replace them every four seconds. The devs were kind and made every electric utility work with both types of batteries, so if you were to use a tier 2 battery in your electric grill, you can do quite a bit of cooking on one charge. Unfortunately, there is no difference in cooking times. Your potatoes will cook just as quickly on the advanced grill as they will on the electric grill. Plus, there is the cleaner aesthetic, of course, but just be aware that most of the machines cost a lot of titanium to make, so they are definitely intended for late game play, but that won't stop us from enjoying them anyways. Moving on, we have the new juicer. Of course, this is the liquid equivalent to the beloved cooking pot, so you can now fill all of your hydration needs in style. Juices give a little bit of bonus hydration and can give some other advantages, but we'll cover all of the exact recipes and things that were changed on the food side of Raft in another video, so be sure to subscribe if that interests you. Just like the electric grill, the juicer is powered with a battery compared to the cooking pot's pile of planks. So if there's one thing you need to know about all of the new machines, it's that you'll need a lot of batteries. And you'll also need to smelt down a ton of copper to make all of those batteries. So if that's the case, then the upgraded electric smelter is perfect for you. The smelter is one of the most essential items in the game because you'll need plenty of copper, vine goo, metal titanium, and other stuff to make all of these fun gadgets that we're showing off today. But before the Chapter 3 update, we were confined to these dinky little brick-and-mortar smelters that could only smelt one thing at a time. The electric smelter can smelt up to three things simultaneously, and it's yet again, of course, empowered by electricity. Unfortunately, there is no difference in smelt time yet again, but bulk is always nice. Where everything up until now has been electric, the next item doesn't require any fuel at all. It is the newer version of everyone's favorite collection nets. Really, not a whole lot is different about this besides the cost. The upgraded net costs 4 titanium per net to cost, but hey, at least it can hold 15 items compared to the generic net only holding 10. So if you're going to craft this, let's be honest, it's going to be for the aesthetic and nothing else. But that's certainly not true of the upgraded biofuel refiner. Biofuel is easily one of the most annoying resources to continually manage in Raft because these dinky little bins that you need to be constantly refueling with potatoes and honey just make one measly jar of biofuel, but fear no longer because the advanced biofuel refiner is here. Thankfully, this also doesn't require any power to operate, and it can make multiple batches of biofuel at once. The other major feature is that it actually hooks up to all of your fuel pipes, making it so that you just have to top off the honey and potatoes every once in a while to have a constant supply of biofuel which is honestly really, really nice. Once upon a time, you probably would have used all of that excess biofuel to charge up your batteries with the battery charger. However, there is now a new option for some green energy in the game that you can manage passively. The new windmill can charge four batteries at once, compared to the battery chargers too. The one big downside of the windmill is that it's pretty huge, so you will need to dedicate a bit of space to have this on your raft, but frankly, not dealing with the old charger for double the batteries is a lovely change overall. Next up is the Recycler. I covered this more in depth in the last part of my Chapter 3 guides for trading posts and fishing, 
So if you're interested in all of the details, I'd recommend checking out that video. But I learned from one of your comments that the different materials have some different weighted effects on how much is needed to create a trash cube. Simple resources like planks will take 30 units to create one trash cube. The more valuable the resource, the less you need. So things like leather only require 6 units per cube, or bolts only require 4. The ultimate thing that I've discovered so far is of course titanium ore, which only needs 2 ores per cube, but that's still a waste in my book. So now you know if you didn't already. And last but not least in the new machines before we get into farming, we have the upgraded anchor. Your old stationary anchor will still work great, but the new one has one benefit. It can be controlled by your engine controls. Neither anchor requires any power, so that isn't a factor here, but having the automated stop is quite nice for when you build a large raft and don't want to run around looking for your anchor to raise and lower it. On the engine controls note, the lever for the anchor is on the side, so be sure to toggle it when you're done moving and want to stop. This one is pretty simple overall, but it does give a little bit of a quality of life change. And now we're going to move on to the new farming items. Specifically, we're going to talk about the advanced crop plots. For the new small plots, you can now fit four of any small crop into a single plot, as opposed to the simple plots only fitting three. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure that this is a win aside from the cleaner exterior. The old crop plots can be placed on things like tables and shelves, meaning you can make some ultra compact farms with no downsides. And frankly, you can't do that with the new plots, plus they are slightly raised off the ground in their base positions. Also, you can't hang the new small plot from the ceiling like you can with the old one, so that decoration option is just non-existent with the new plots. But out of curiosity, I tried placing as many of each kind of plot on a single wall as I could to test for space efficiency, since clearly the old plots are winning in terms of standard vertical space and compactness. It turns out that you can fit four of the new crop plots along one wall before they'll collide with the ceiling for a total of 16 plants. For the old plots, you can fit 6 of them on one wall for a total of 18 plants, making the old plots still better in terms of space efficiency. So really the new ones are really only good for the aesthetic. And also there is no difference in growing time. I sat here watching potatoes grow for 5 minutes just to be sure. The medium crop plots are a bit of a different story, however. The old medium crop plots are bulky and oddly shaped, making them kind of a pain to work with. They have the same benefit as the small crop plots where they can be placed on tables for vertical space efficiency, but really they don't have a lot else going for them. The advanced medium crop plots can hold up to 4 plants at once compared to the old plots too, so that's double the plants in a nicely square, flat shape. Again, this plot definitely loses in terms of vertical efficiency, but you could always mix and match these with the simple small plots from earlier for a pretty efficient farm. The tree plots I legitimately cannot find a difference in, despite looking slightly cleaner. Both only hold one tree, both grow at the same rate, so technically the new one is a bit smaller and the supports are clean beams, but that's really about it. So I would say that the only advanced crop plot that's actually worth crafting would be the medium one, but that's just my opinion, so be sure to leave a comment telling me what you think down below. So that covers all of the new machines and farming items that were added with chapter 3. Again, you'll need a lot of batteries and a lot of titanium to craft all of this stuff, so I wish you luck in all of your grinding. Be sure to let me know which one of the new machines is your favorite, because I think all of them have their place. Personally, the biofuel refiner's gotta be it for me. It's just so nice to have an automated process after so long of having to refill it halfway. Anyways, that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. Also, all of the support recently has been insane, so a heartfelt thank you to all of you. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.